Amen. Well, again, my name is Amir Burton, and I will be your preacher today. All right. Thank you, guys. Real quick from the front end, appreciate the applause. Thank you uh, kindly. But uh, from the front end, I just want to say a big thank you to you, the Broward Church, uh, for allowing me to be here today uh, and to share the word of God with you at this time. Also, Tony Fernandez and the leadership group and the staff and, and all and everybody that uh, thought of me and my wife and uh, allowed us to come. Can we give the leadership and the staff a round of applause? They're really doing a beautiful thing here, an awesome thing, and, and that wouldn't be complete without an awesome membership. And so can we give a round of applause to ourselves, being members here at the Broward Church? Very nice. Thanks again for that welcome, Tony. I feel uh, at home. I feel like I'm with family. And, and speaking of family, here goes a picture of mine here. All right. And so uh, there goes my beautiful, my spiritual, elegant, and intelligent Wonder Woman of my dreams. Her name is Jewel right there uh, to my left. And she's sitting right there. She's here today as well. And uh, that right there is our little boy, our firstborn, only born. All right, three year old, he's three years old. He's going on four, year old, four years old in he, August 4th. August 4th, in about you know, two weeks or so, he will be four years old. That's his golden birthday, August 4th. And he knows it's his golden birthday. Uh, he knows we're going to turn up. With the cake pops, the lollipops, we're going to have some Capri Sun on the rocks. Okay? We're going to be having a great time, and, and that's him right there. He's here today as well, so you, you'll probably see him running around afterwards. And so this, again, is a picture of my family. We've already been introduced, but the reason why I'm showing you a picture of my family from the front here is because statistics say that if I show you a picture of my family, y'all going to listen to me better. All right, so now that I got your attention, now that I got your attention, are y'all ready for the Word of God? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. I said, are y'all ready for the word? There it is. I knew we were in church today. And, and real quick, I understand that, that we're in a series right now, right? We're all in a series, this ministry of Jesus series. Is that right or is that wrong? Yeah, that's right. That, that's exactly right. I know that's right because I got a little nosy. Okay, I got a little nosy when I was asked to speak today, and I got all up in y'all business. Okay, I peeked through the blinds and I peeked around the corner, all right? Now, and I know that you guys are in that series, and that series has been awesome. Hasn't it been a great series? Yeah. It's been all that, and then some Campbell's chicken noodle good, KFC finger licking good. All right, it's been an awesome and incredible series. It's been so right, it's been so nice. I said, I gotta stay away from that series. All right, I gotta stay away from it. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let the staff keep that. I don't wanna come up here today and mess the series up and then have Tony gonna have to clean it up, maybe even go to another. I'm not doing that. So I said, I'm staying Old Testament far away from that series, all right? And so we're gonna be in 2 Kings chapter seven. All right, if you got your Bible, go ahead and turn on over there. 2 Kings chapter seven. Verse number three, and I will say that even though we're going to be studying out some Old Testament today, I will be talking about Jesus up in here, okay? Of course, if that's okay with you guys for me to go ahead and do. All right, we're talking about Jesus. You heard him do it. They gave me to go ahead, so let me go ahead and go ahead, all right? Second Kings, chapter 7, verse number 3. Second Kings 7, verse number 3, the Bible here says, Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. And they said to each other, why stay here until we die? And that's a big thing. That's a huge thing. That's some underlined, worthy, highlight worthy content right there. Why stay here until we die? So this passage is for everybody in the room that's ready to go to the next level. All right, see if you came here today and you're satisfied with where you are in your walk with God, if you're content with where you are, if you're saying, hey, look, I've been doing this for a while and I'm, I'm okay, I'm going to give you this disclaimer from the jump. I may put you to sleep for the next 30 minutes because we're not talking about staying where we are. We're not talking about being satisfied. We're not talking about being okay. We're talking about, hey, why are we going to stay here? All right, so this passage and this message is for everyone in the room that's saying, hey, I got this desire to go deeper on the inside of me. I got this desire to go further on the inside of me. You know, I'm on my way to becoming somebody in Christ that I want to become. I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way, and I'm not leaving 2022 without growth and maturity. And if you're with me on that, say it out loud. Say, I'm on the move. Say it again. Say, I'm on the move. 
That's right, we can't stay here, we can't stay stuck, we can't stay stagnant. So the title of our time in the Word of God today is I'm on the move. Say it again, say I'm on the move. I'm on the move, the M-O-V to the E. What's that spell, church? That spells move. And that's what we're talking about today, this morning. And I know I said that I was going to stay away from that series right, that y'all been in, but the Spirit is bringing me, me into it for a minute because you can't read through a gospel without seeing this from Jesus. Right? You can't get very far, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, without seeing the words on his way as he went. Jesus went this way. Jesus went that way. Why? Because moving forward was always routine on the agenda of Jesus. Jesus was never content and satisfied to stay in place or to settle down, so much so that if anybody in the Gospels wanted to have a meeting with Jesus, they best be ready to get on the move. All right, get your chanclas, your Balenciagas, whatever it is that you wear to meet Jesus because Jesus was in motion. Jesus was moving. And it wasn't always just this physical sense. How many of us know that Jesus, he was about moving understanding forward, conviction forward, character forward, love forward, and all things related to the things of God. Why? Because we're called to go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And like Paul says in the New Testament, we're not going to pause in place and pause and stay where we are. No, we press on towards what's ahead. And this is why we're studying this out this morning, and we see this going on here in the text that we're reading today. And this morning I want to study out this conversation that these men are having with each other as it reveals to us a lot of what needs to take place in our lives if we're going to continue to move forward. Amen? Amen. All right, so 2 Kings 7.3. Again, now there were four men. Let me give you this context real quick. Context, right? Where are we in the Bible? All right, real quick, have you guys ever heard of the Bible Project before? All right, that resource online with those cool illustrations and and videos and things like that. It's awesome. It helps you understand, right, the context of the book that you're going to read, right? Here's a picture, right, if you're, you're, you're unfamiliar with it, right? It looks like this, right? It's the Bible Project. Now, the other day I was hanging out with Tony, I was hanging out at his house, and, and he was listening to some music, all right? He, he asked me this question that I have never been asked before in my life. He said, Amir, are you creative? You creative? I was like, yeah, I'm creative. I, 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 you play instruments? Like, do, do, do you do that? No, I, I don't do all that, Tony, but I think I, think I could think creatively. And then the, it stopped there. He didn't ask me anything else after that. And that, and that stuck with me. And I got to, the, to my place that I'm staying at later that night, and I was like, man, I got to show Tony that I'm creative. I, I'm, I'm creative. I don't, I don't think he bought it. I don't think he bought it. And, and so I started to watch the Bible Project again, and I got a little inspired. Okay, I said, I, I, I'm going to do a little Bible project of my own. All right, now it was late, it was late at night, and I, again, I was thinking about it, all right, and so I will say, disclaimer again, all right, this is the beta version, okay? It's the beta version of my Bible project. I don't have the funding, right, that the Bible project, but Brow, Broward Church, if y'all want to sponsor me, I will Picasso the thing up. <laughs> Watercolors and everything, but until then, until then this, this is what you get. This is what you get. I don't know if it helps the case, Tony. But this, this is my Bible project here, all right? And so where are we? In the context of the Bible, all right? And so we got Adam and Eve, check, that happened. All right, we got, we got the flood, check, that happened, right? Y'all know this third one here? Y'all know who that is? That's Abraham, right? And the son right there, that happened. Egypt happened, right? We got David and Goliath, that happened, right? The kingdom's divided, kingdom's divided. I tried, I tried, I tried my best, I tried my best, I did. It's all Tony's doing, okay? Talk to Tony after, he led me to this, all right? The kingdom's divided, right? As, as, as we know, the kingdom's divided, Israel and Judah, right? And then we get to where we're at. And the Bible tells us that this famine hit the land, the whole land, one of the most devastating famines to ever hit. That meant that there was no more bone-in wings, no more sushi or, or tempura rolls. No more build your own unlimited topping pizza. All right, that's, that's pizza, yep, that's, that's some pizza. All right, and then no more ice cream, right? No more butter pecan flavor ice cream with the sprinkles. That's my favorite, by the way. 
All right, there was, there's a famine, no more sprinkles. Say it ain't so. Say it's, you know it's bad if there's no sprinkles. Or top is for the ice cream. And it, and it was bad. This famine was bad. The hungry got hangry. Then the hangry, they got crazy. They, cannibalism crazy. All right, they, was, they were having meetings. But hey, let's eat members of our, crazy stuff going on, right? At the same time, these four men that had leprosy, a lot of us, we know, leprosy is this, this very heinous, right, disease that affects the skin, right? Your limbs will go missing. Your body is just torn apart, highly contagious. And so you were asked to leave the community you were in. And, and these men, they were kicked out, all right? And the, the, the four men here, they got word of what was going on, where they were at. They got word of it. They said, okay, it's this famine in there. Not only that, but they, they way beyond beef in there. They talking about eating people. They, let's go. Let's move. And these men started to move forward. And again, the Bible says here, now there were four men with leprosy. And real quick, let's note that. It says there there were four men with leprosy. So this is not the story of the four lepers. This is not the story of the four leprous men. The Bible takes some time. I believe and intentionally writes it, these are four men with leprosy. And to clear that up, in case you're not catching what I'm putting down here, the Bible identifies them as men before they were the disease, before they were their issue or their condition. And I believe that there's some encouragement that we can take from that. And that is... Don't project the issue onto your identity. In other words, do not become, all of us, a lot of us in this room, majority if not all, we're fighting something. We're going through something. We're battling something. But the encouragement here is do not fight or do not become what you're fighting or what you're trying to stay away from. Right, Frederick Nietzsche, y'all remember Nietzsche? Heard that name before, that brilliant mind from back in the day. Right, he said it like this. He said, be careful that when, when you're fighting the monster, you do not become that monster. All right, and so identity-wise, they were men. Issue-wise, they had leprosy. If they owned their issue as their identity, they could never be free. They could never be blessed. They could never be healed because as long as you become one with your issue or your condition, you can never be set free. And so, sure, I'm fighting leprosy, but I will not become the leper. Sure, I'm fighting bitterness in my life, but I will not become bitter. Sure, I'm fighting to have faith in this season of my life, but I will not become faithless. No, I refuse to give any license or permission to anything other than who God says that I am. On that Broward Church, let this be the season where we get active in telling ourselves who we are and who we aren't. I can't be alone if I'm a friend of the Most High. I can't be a failure if I'm more than a conqueror. No, let's believe in and let's commit to the discipline and practice of drawing a line in between who we are and what we're going through. And let's not attach to our person what we don't want to be attached to our person. Amen? It's for men with leprosy. Sure, they have something. It's with them for the season, but it's not them. Sure, I'm going through a trial. Sure, I'm I'm with this, I'm with that. It's a season. That is not who I am. Let's keep it going. We're still in verse 3. It says, now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? And that's another big thing. Right, the Bible is telling us that they said this to each other. That means they didn't only say the same thing, but they were thinking the same thing. And so that means that should lead us really to evaluate our circles, to make sure our crew, make sure our squad, homeboys, homegirls, whatever you want to call them, not only speak the same as you, but think the same. Why, this is a principle we know from life, because you can sabotage your destiny hanging with the wrong crew. It ain't even you, right? It's like Jonah. Y'all remember Jonah? Jonah from the Bible, right? We remember Jonah? I heard one, yeah. 
It's just me and you. It's just me and you today. I'm just going to talk. Me and you with me today. Jonah, we remember Jonah? Right, Jonah is running from God. Jonah is running from God. He ends up on this random man's boat. And there's this tsunami on this man's boat. I heard this once and I'll share it with you. So the boat represents your life. The people on your boat represents who you allow into your life. And so what if you're letting people in your life that are causing storms? See, I don't know about you, but I know I can do bad all by myself. I don't need any help messing up my life. I'm good at messing up my life. I don't need no one else in my job, in my heart, in my home, or in my emotions to do that for me. And so what did they do in the story? They looked at Jonah, they said, Jonah, you know what, you got, you got to go. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got, no, don't do that. You need your neighbor. <laughs> you need your neighbor, right? But, and this is a concept we know. Some of us, we're sinking in the name of loyalty. And we associate that all the time with a circle and a group of people. But what if it's, we're too loyal to the me, myself, and I? The Bible here says it's these four men. There's this togetherness. There's this one anotherness going on here in the text. And the mind was to move forward, which is a good move. And really with that, you know, I... When you're connected to good company, your back is never against the wall. All right, how many of us in here have ever been in a fight before? Show of hands. Okay, all right, so okay, y'all, she's me, all right? She got hands over here. Some of y'all in the Broward Church got hands, right? Some of us, we've been in a fight, some of us, we admitted it. Some of us, I ain't gonna put my hand up. All right, but if you ever been in a fight, or have seen and watched the fight, you know that the worst position and place you can end, ever end up in is with your back against the wall, boxed up in between the wall and your opponent. When that happens, you got nowhere to maneuver, you got nowhere to bob and weave, and eventually you can lose the fight. And spiritually speaking, we back ourselves into a wall and we try to DIY this Jesus is Lord thing. DIY, y'all know DIY means? Do it yourself, all right? And we live in this world where there's all kind of, of things that we can do ourselves. It's all over and it's spread across. Back home in LA, we got this whole DIY store that you can go to, all right? And so we're, we're surrounded by all this do it yourself and DIY. But let's not forget that you will never find and see a DIY promotion for your spiritual walk in the NIV, in the KJV, in the ESV, any V and version of the Bible that you can ever read. And what I'm saying with that is if Jesus kept the DIY out of discipleship, can we keep it out of the church? Can we continue to reach out to one another? Can we continue to go to others for help and, 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 and seek this, to have this one another community, right, and continue to do that? I know the pandemic has changed that in a lot of ways, but the Bible hasn't. And let's make the decision to fight with a brother and sister by our sides instead of with a wall behind our backs. You know, speaking of, of a brother and a sister. <laughs> amen. Speaking of a brother and sister, my wife, right here at, at the age of six years old, she was with her two brothers, right, who were five and eight year, years old at this time in a parking lot of a 7-Eleven or in the van. All right, they, their mom just ran in, my mother-in-law, she ran in to get them all some Slurpees. You know they was on their best behavior for all three of them to get them Slurpees. And she ran in real quick, all right, to grab the Slurpees. And while she was inside the 7-Eleven, this random guy ran up to the van, somehow opened the door, hopped in the van, and, and sped off in the van with Jewel and her two brothers still in the van. And so this is a hijacking and a kidnapping going on at the same time. And any other child may have been terrified and scared out. That's a scary situation. Who is this? I don't know who this is. But not Jewel and her two brothers. Well, the five-year-old was crying the whole time this was going on. Not him. But her eight-year-old brother. Y'all remember the, like the club used to lock your steering wheel to the... Yeah, he grabbed that heavy metal club, y'all remember that? He grabbed that club and started to beat this man, oh, oh, back of the head, the back, right, in the arms, with the club. Mind you, this is an eight-year-old, just beating, hit him. 
And Jewel, at six years old, took the seatbelt off, got behind the seat that the, the burglar was driving, and then proceeded to choke out the burglar <laughs> at six years old. And so y'all gotta pray for me. I married the woman <laughs> who, at six years old, strangled out a burglar. I better not forget a birthday. I better not forget an anniversary or a special occasion, a day in my life. All right, and so this was going on. Eventually, the man figured out how to throw them out the van, and then he, he sped off. The eight-year-old was paying attention to where they were going the entire time and was able to take his sister, Jewel, and his brother, five-year-old, to walk them all the way back to the 7-Eleven where all this started at. And his story's confirmed. One year, Jewel, she was doing some guidance counseling, and she shared that story. It was an icebreaker. She shared it. And, and an incoming freshman uh, to the college that, that Jewel was doing the counseling at rose his hand. He says, I, my parents told me that story. I know that story. It was all on the news, helicopters and all that, right? And why am I bringing this up? What Jewel could have struggled with on her own, she was able to accomplish with her brothers. Here's a word of wisdom for you before we move on. Don't let the self-sufficient you sabotage the next you. One of the biggest setbacks to the better men and women of God that we have the potential to become occurs when we allow our feelings to interfere with connecting with the people that God has, has put around us, whether that's in person or whether that's tuning in online. And I get it, I understand relationships can get messy. We know that. We'll offend each other, we'll hurt each other, we'll wound each other. We can say things that, you know, and there's the intent and all that. And, and that, that happens and that's going to continue to happen. But you know what the Bible is going to continue to say? Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Wounds from a brother and sister can be trusted. And I'm not saying that to give anybody a free pass to treat anybody any type of way. But I'm saying that because this cancel culture where we allow one poor moment with somebody lead to cancel the whole relationship. And now I tear down your whole character because of one poor moment. And I'm turning the good people of God into no good people? That's what we need to move from. Because we, like the men in this scripture, need a group of four, a dynamic of four or more, as we continue to move forward. Amen? All right, verse four now. Let's move on. The Bible says, if we say we'll go back to our home city, the famine is there, and we will die. And so at first they say, hey, if we stay here, we're going to die. Figuring out, figuring out the move, what's that going to be? If they said, if we go back to where we came from, to our past, the former, they said that they will also die as well. And on that, I want to tell y'all a little secret. Is that okay? Tell y'all a little secret. Y'all, y'all can hear me? Do I need to move this? Shh, it's a secret. Y'all gotta lean in. Y'all lean in. And when someone's right. edge of your seats, come on. They some some of y'all doing this, all right? It's gotta be, I know there's people driving around outside. And, you know, they ain't in church, so they can't get the secret. It's a secret. Y'all ready for the secret? Some of y'all say, yes. The secret is this. The past is not an option. The past is not an option. There's nothing in your past. Why am I bringing this up? Because that's the first temptation. As soon as we start trusting in God and we take a step out in faith, it's like, okay, God, I'm trusting you. I'm being faithful. I'm, I'm, I'm loyal. I'm committed, God. Come on, God, where are you, God? It's, it's cold, God, it's cold out here. If God doesn't come through on our time frame, the first temptation is, man, I'm going back to the, we're all prone to this. As believers, when we don't get what we want, the way we want it, how we want it, the first temptation is to go back to the past. Write it down. Turning back to the former is the first temptation of moving forward. Why is that? Because I know how the former goes. I know how the former works. I've been in the former before, but moving forward, 
That's unfamiliar. And that makes me uncomfortable. And when I don't get that right away reassurance that I made the right decision, my first temptation is I'm going back to the way I used to say it. I'm going back to the way I used to do it. I'm going back to the way I used to treat her, the way I used to treat him. Insert it, whatever it is for you. This isn't an old thing, or this isn't a new thing. This is an old thing, I should say. Or we see this with the children of Israel. Y'all remember the children of Israel? Exodus chapter 3. God says, come out of there, y'all. I'm giving you this land flowing with milk and honey. People said, what? Let's go, y'all. Come on. The Bible says they started, they danced a little bit, right? It was part of that's all I'm going to do. Jewel the other day said, no, just keep the dance moves in L.A. Just do that. <laughs> all right? He said, U-G-L-Y, Pharaoh ain't got no alibi, right? They're having a good time as they're leaving, right? And they're going out in faith. And it's a party, and they're celebrating 20 years past. 30 years pass, 40 years pass, they said, where is the promise? I, I trusted God, I was loyal, I was committed, I was faithful, I'm walking by faith, not by sight, but here I am 40 years later, where is the promise? That's not a new, that's, that's an old question. They said, we wish to God. We were back in Egypt, being a slave. A lot of us, we know the context is better than, than, than the patience of anticipating a blessing from God. That's what they said. We would rather go back to that bondage and that poor treatment that never worked out in the first place. And don't we say the same thing? How many times in the new year do we go back to being who we were in the previous year? The men in the text, they said, it's a famine back there. Famine means emptiness. It's barren. No fruitfulness. There's nothing back there for us. Can we call our past the same thing? And how many times do we, like the children of Israel, go back to the things that keep us away from what's ahead? I, f I found it wise to ask myself this question, and I'll ask you this morning. Question is, is, is there a former me alive in me, keeping me from what's ahead of me? Is there something in my life that I bury before others that I give life to when I'm alone? Do I bury my anger before others, but give it life when it's just me and my spouse? Do I bury, bury a double life, hypocrisy, before others in the church, but give it life when I'm with my friends? I wonder if you have the courage to ask yourself this question today. Is there a form of me that I'm giving life to? That I said way back when I first came into Christ that I was going to get rid of. Let's keep going. Later on, in verse 4, they say, if we stay here, we will also die. And so let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender. If they spare us, we live. If they kill us, we die. And so they're walking feebly, right? They're lepers, but they're faithful. They said, let's keep moving. It's this camp. It's the Arameans. It's this strong army. But you know what? We have faith that there's still a way out of this. And even if not, amen, but we're still going they in no way, shape, or form on this journey became, that's a key word, became anything other than faithful to moving forward. And that leads me to ask you another question. That question is, have you become the believer you never wanted to become? A number of us in this room, we've been doing this Jesus is Lord thing for a while now, coming to church for a while, reading the Bible for a while, praying for a while. We, But have we become, through all that investment and all that time and all that effort and all that energy should have led us to become? Or have we become something other than who we long ago aspired to be? Valentine's Day 
2021, the pregnancy test said that we were positive, to which I was excited. But my wife, she came home from the doctor disturbed. Doctor said that she had just test positive, or not test positive, had test for high blood pressure. And blood, high blood pressure is a threat to the baby's life, and so they put her on this high blood pressure medication immediately and right away. Later on, sometime later, we found out that that test was a false pro positive, that pregnancy test, which that was okay, but we also found out that that medication had a recall on it. And it led to severe heart trouble. To which we found out, Joel came, you know, woke up, couldn't breathe, had symptoms of a heart attack. You know, that, that led to several tests, several appointments, specialist appointments. She was wearing a heart monitor. And I remember, you know, we're still trying to figure out in some ways what's going on there, but I remember when everything first, you know, began and started happening. The last thing I, I thought about was God making a way. I immediately started to think bad news, worst case scenario. I didn't think that God was gonna work all this out for the good. And I learned through that time that I can believe in my ability to protect myself more than I believe in God's ability to make a way. Because I don't want to be, you know, messed up. And I don't want to think the positive, and the positive doesn't happen, and I'm, I'm messed up. So let me protect myself by preparing for the worst. But I learned to prepare for the worst is to expect the worst. And to expect the worst is to invite the worst. And when you invite the worst, the worst is going to show up. And that's not the believer who I wanted to be, but that's who I became in that moment. And I'm grateful for hindsight. I'm grateful for this question. And I'm also grateful to understand that a believer unaware of the deeper condition is a believer kept from the mature condition. There's no way to move forward if we don't know what's going on on the deepest part of us. All right, this is John 6.26. Y'all remember John 6.26? Let me remind you of John 6.26. Right? Two fish and five loaves. Y'all remember now? Yeah. Right? Jesus just gave the good meal, plus leftovers. Everybody ate. The people said, do it again, Jesus. All right? This time, I believe, with some red lobster, right? Them Cheddar Bay biscuits. Y'all ever had them Cheddar Bay biscuits before? All right? I would have said that the first time. Little boy, move aside. <laughs> Multiply this red lobster, Jesus. They said, Jesus, do the miracle again. Do it again, Jesus. Jesus said, he replied, he said, I'm more than the feeder of the hungry. I'm more than the satisfier of the appetite. But if you never get in touch with the deeper things, things deeper than the craving of something to eat, like what's triggering that toxic emotional response in you that you can't seem to shake? What's triggering these cycles in your life that you can't get, get over? If you don't get in touch with the deeper conditions and let me work on that, you will never endure to an eternal life, let alone a mature life. And so on that Broward Church, can this be the season where, where we refuse to live beneath the surface? Can we refuse to, to be satisfied with not going to that place? Can we move on from that? And can we rise to the occasion of doing the work, the hard work of becoming aware of who we truly are? And how about asking somebody in our lives to help us? Because a lot of times, I mean, how, how many times have we been under the impression that we've been doing the right thing, but just to find out in the end, we've been deceived? I got this friend back in San Diego, KP. KP has a grandma. Everybody say, what's up, KP? Hey, KP, I don't know if you're watching it, but he's in San Diego. KP's grandma got a phone call one day. The phone call said, we got KP. KP we holding KP hostage. If you ever want to see KP again, you need to give us $3,000 by the end of the day. Hung up the phone. Grandma went to work. Grandma got her bag. 
Grandma went straight to the bank. She got all 3,000 of them dollars, called up her son, right, KP's dad, and said, hey, don't worry about KP. I got the 3K in hand that's gonna save the day. Grandma, a real one, right? KP's dad called KP. KP, what's going on? You answering the phone like, Grandma's saying that you're being held hostage. Hostage? I'm not being held hostage. I'm at home right now with my newborn baby girl. All right, if anybody's holding me hostage, it's her, and I don't want to go nowhere else. All right, why am I bringing this up? Because Grandma was under the impression that she was doing the right thing. Just to find out in the end, she was deceived. Let's not allow that to happen to us. Let's move away from that deceived place. And let's figure out who we really are, all right, in a group, in a dynamic that can contribute to that. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to close out here. Verses 5 to 9. We're going to transition to communion as well. The Bible says here, I abbreviated it. The Bible says, at dusk, they got up, went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the noise of chariots and horses in a great army. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. It was Waffle House. I love Waffle House, by the way. We don't got that back home, but y'all got that nearby. We going in the morning, tomorrow, Monday morning. If y'all want to join us, join us. But I know Waffle House got that reputation. Anyway, they took the silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid them. Verse 9, they said to each other, what we are doing is not right. It's a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. They said this is good news. This is remarkable. Why? Again, there's a famine going on back home. We just saved thousands of lives. We got to go spread the news. And, and, and remember, these men were the men that were kicked out because they had this disease, kicked out friends, family. And here they are thinking about the people that left them for dead. And I want to add here real quick that they demonstrate this heart of my love for you goes beyond your treatment of me. See, not everybody's walking into to blessings because not everybody has that heart. It's the Jesus heart, right? I'm going to do to others as I would have them do unto me. Not demand them to do unto me, have them do unto me. And they're demonstrating this heart. But again, it, imagine if it was the, the other way around, right, where they're keeping things to themselves. Imagine if we don't get that last verse and they played the victim. You know what? They're right. We're good for nothing. We're as good as dead. They would have never moved forward. And they would have never stumbled across this remarkable victory. The point is, the most remarkable acts of God occur as we resolve to move forward. Resolve, as we're determined to move forward and ahead. A, a stone against a giant doesn't add to a win. Gideon versus Midian, if you know that story, it doesn't add to a win. Four lepers saving thousands of lives, that doesn't add up alone and by themselves. The odds are stacked against. But with the resolve and the determination to move forward, the remarkable occurs. We see the same thing with Jesus. Right, the Bible tells us in Luke 22, verse 42, Jesus, he's praying. We know this, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus is saying here, I got some resolve to move ahead. It's challenging. It's hard. It's difficult. But something remarkable is on the other side. And that's all of us here today at the Broward Church, in person and online. Some remarkable stories in the room. We just heard this morning one of those. And there's more to come in others' lives, but also in our own life. And so let's have the heart of Jesus 
And let's meditate on this heart that he's demonstrating in this prayer and in the story of these four men. And maybe for you, it's, it's I, I got to move on from projecting things onto who I am. Or maybe it's you, I, I, I got to move away from considering going back. Maybe it's none of those things for you. Maybe it's something else. But allow this story, allow Jesus here in the garden to encourage your thoughts and guide your thoughts during this time to resemble the heart of these four men here and ultimately Jesus who had this resolve to save our lives. Let's pray and take communion together. God and Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this opportunity to be in this room and be in this place and to know your sacrifice. Know you gave up your son for us to heal us, as the Bible says. But we know that that would not happen and take place without the resolve of Jesus to move forward in spite of the difficulty ahead of him. And so we meditate on that today. And God, may you also allow the scripture in this time in your word to lead us to the areas in, in our lives that we need to move forward in and to demonstrate this same resolve, the same heart that Christ had moments before crucifixion. We love you, we thank you, and we're grateful for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.